Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver now. RoadRoo.com. Uh, I sat down yesterday. Those of you who saw us live, myself and John Claude and the man, the myth, the legend, David Morgan. Uh, great discussion on silver. Uh, it's called Silver Unobtainium. I think we are headed there faster than a bullet out of a gun, uh, meaning that the pricing model for silver is broken. We've known that for decades. Uh, we know why. We know how. We know who. Uh, the question is, where do we go from here? And that's uh, a question we will all I'll be asking. I do believe that next week the Silver Institute will announce um, – a situation. <laughs> they won't. They won't fully announce everything. I talked to Jenny about this last week in our reading, and she's like, you know, they they don't hit where they need to hit, and they don't respond to any criticism of what they do hit. This is as far as the solar numbers that are that happened last year and are ongoing. That's the key, and are ongoing. Uh, China, as far as I can tell, so far. China has doubled once again first quarter installations on um, the amount of silver used in solar. Now, China makes up about half of what the world does, and the world is not stopping. No matter what you read on the news, um, solar panels are cheap. Oh, my God. So cheap that, like, panel production companies are going out of business, except they're highly, highly, highly uh, motivated by the government. Subsidies are everywhere in every country. So the U.S. going to China saying, stop producing solar panels. And China just laughed them off, said, you guys are ridiculous. I mean, you yell at us for polluting the world, and now you we're, we're fixing that problem. We'll fix it faster than anybody has. It reminds me a lot of Mr. Trump, how he can fix problems so much faster than your regular government entities do. And that's kind of what... Uh, the thought pattern is, oh, by the way, you also get to destroy the banking cabal by going green energy. That's why the rest of the world is really getting on board with uh, the solar revolution. Uh, last year, as, as you know, I've had this on my front page of the public road at Road to Rita for three months now, two months at least. And this is what we did last year. We did uh, 243 gigawatts plus another 200 gigawatts of uh, solar panels that were made but not installed yet, uh, which gets us 350 to 400 million ounces. Now we are doubling again. That'll be 700 million ounces. We only pull out of the ground. That's just solar. And you can say what you want. I would love to have a debate with anybody, even the specialists in the industry, um, they've gotten it wrong for the past four years in a row. As you can tell, the past four years have been massive growth. I mean, from 2000, uh, 2001, the jump was 146 to 182. And, then and everybody said, oh, it's just going to be flat from then on out. It was just an anomaly year. And then 2002 comes and it's 252 gigawatts. And everybody's like, it's going to be flat. It's just an anomaly year. Every single year, they say the exact same thing. And because they're not even listening to what China has to say. They're not even looking at the COP28, <clears throat> where, where, what was it, Seven, 200 countries, 200 countries agreed to triple green energy by 2030. And most of that is going to be solar. So you got to go 5x solar or 6x solar in six years. You need six terawatts of solar to be added in the next six years, that's a terawatt a year. And this year, last year, we only did 443, not even half that. So you're going to have to make it up. Will we, hit, will we hit 886, which would be doubling the, the um, installations? No, we wouldn't. Uh, I don't think we can. Uh, China is building, I think they can do six to 700 gigawatts of newly manufactured um uh, panels now, not talking about installation, just talking about manufacturing. And but there's a lot, there's a lot of conversion over to Topcon. This year will be 80% Topcon, and nobody's talking about that either, which uses 65% more silver. So the Silver Institute got themselves in a little bit of a pickle. 
for the last year and a half, they've been telling people that the amount of silver used in 2023 is going to be about 160 million ounces. And it is actually double that, more than double that. Um, but I do hear there is a glimmer of hope because the chairman of the board of the Silver Institute came out in an interview and said it's going to be around 300 million ounces. Hey, if they do that, good on them. And it's going to double next year, by the way. So doubling means you can't, there's no silver left. There's no silver left for electric cars. There's no silver left for, uh, obviously, investment purposes. There's no silver left for ETFs. There's no silver left for jewelry. No silver left for silverware. No silver left for anything in three years. Because in three years, we'll be over, that would be over a billion ounces of silver used. And no, it is not going flat. I, I saw this guy, David Morgan says is a great analyst. This guy, Matt, um, Matt Watson, I think his name is. He comes from the solar industry and he got it so freaking wrong. It's shockingly wrong. He has the amount of silver used going down, go, like dropping per precipitously, which is the exact opposite of what's happening. Um, and it, it was shocking. Even even the head of uh, he was the guy who was interviewing the head of the Silver Institute, chairman of the board. And you can find that on Kitco videos or on on YouTube. Um, and and I mean uh, the other stuff, yeah, it looked like good numbers, but he it, it is shocking how wrong he got the the, uh, the situation in silver. I mean in solar because he comes from the solar industry. Now, I'm not saying the United States will do it. The United States have all, all of a sudden gone sour on solar because they're using up all the silver. The United States made the, the U.S. Mint stop making silver eagles. They haven't made it, sold one silver eagle since March 1st. Completely illegal. But, hey, Janet Yellen's trying to save the world. Janet Yellen had to go all the way to China, and every time she shows up there, they laugh at her. They were calling her a Dama, D-A-M-A, as she's walking off the plane in her drab... Uh, <laughs> outfit. Adama's like a, a middle-aged uh, kind of frumpy woman in China. It's crazy. I mean, the, the insanity of what's going on right now. So we have a situation next week, next Wednesday, the Silver Institute's going to have to show its cards. They should have talked about this a year ago. And they're not talking about it. Here's something else. They're not talking about what's happening right now. It's doubling again. It is doubling again at least in China. And the rest of the world, they're doing a hell of a lot too. Might not double. Last year, China doubled, but they also did, you know, the rest of the world did a, a huge amount. The total gain in, uh, in solar installations was 76%. And just times that by the amount of uh, silver used in every, for every watt. Now that's, that's debatable. Fine. I'll, I'd love to debate that. The, the whole idea of thrifting, thrifting means use less silver to save money on silver, is not even on the, on, the, on the playing field at the moment. Who wants to use less silver? It doesn't cost anything. It's almost free. It's, silver's priced at half of its all-time high from 1980, for Christ's sake. There's no need to thrift silver, and you're going to lose capacity. You're going to lose uh, efficiencies. And that's all they go for in, in solar efficiencies. When you're calculating out how much an investment will make you over 35 years, 30 to 35 years in a solar panel, efficiencies are gigantic because you got all that time to make up the investment. So, yeah, if, if they can use more silver to get more, better efficiencies, they, they will, and they are. The entire solar industry is converting to heavily heavily silver heavy top con panels top con top con keep keep repeating that top con top con and it has to do with how much silver is used there's about 65 percent more silver and then there's better technologies that use even more silver one one uses 125 percent of what the perk uses perk is the old technology that yeah they were thrifting silver out of perk because there's new ways to now they, they spray a, a silver paste on the panels instead of, you know, silver wire or whatever they did back in the early perk days. But that makes it 100 times harder to recycle, too. You can't recycle these things for less than probably 1000 bucks an ounce. <laughs> That's where we're headed, my friends. And it's coming like a freight train, and the people that are in the way is uh, people within the U.S. government, 
the I'll guarantee you the U.S. Mint is going to show a massive loss in their hedge book this year. Yes, they aren't closing out their hedge book as they sell their silver, but now that they're not silver selling silver at all, it doesn't matter. They're not selling silver eagles. Ventress Gibson, the HR professional that was put as the head of the mint for some reason in the Biden administration, I don't you know, diversity, great. Congratulations, U.S. Mint. You're now the number two mint on the planet behind the, what is it called, the Royal Bank of Canada, who makes the Maple Leafs, who sell more than the U.S. Mint because Vincent Gibson has decided with Janet Yellen that the, the short position for the big banking cabal, J.P. Morgan and the like, HSBC, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Deutsche Bank, we don't know. They've got pretty much got taken over by China. This is insane. All right. Um, so, yeah, we are. Silver is just refuses to go down. Uh, we are nearing the uh, all time high that was hit five years ago, four years ago of right uh, 20. I think it was 29 bucks. We're at 28. Uh, once it hits 30 for some reason. Small investors and, and large banks like to rig around the, the round numbers. So if it hits 30 and, and holds above it, that, that's probably a solid floor on the market for probably the rest of human history, um, which is great because it's a launching pad for 50 Now, $50 silver will come very fast, and I wouldn't call that a ceiling at all. There's two reasons. There are two reasons historically that the two times silver was approaching 50, it got slammed down. The first was the Hunt brothers in the 1980s. As silver ran to 50, the U.S. government and the COMEX changed all the rules so that you couldn't, you couldn't buy silver anymore. And they threw all kinds of derivative contracts out and, and charged the Hunt brothers with cornering the market because they had 100 million, uh, 110 million ounces in long contracts and about 100 million ounces in physical. J.P. Morgan blew that away. J.P. Morgan had over a billion ounces. So why why wasn't J.P. Morgan charged with cornering the market? Yeah, you, you gotta wonder. Uh, I do think in the collapse, J.P. Morgan, Jamie Dimon, and friends will be the number one bank we look at and say, "Oh my God, how how can we let this go?" Yeah, I understand that my four hundred one k is gone. It's already gone. My my retirement money my savings account, my checking account, all gone because of people like J.B. Morgan who rigged every markets with, you know, what they got, 53 trillion in derivative bets, all with counterparties. Every single one of those has a counterparty. And it's going to be the counterparty that takes the hit, and then that's what takes down the entire system. So we are approaching a very, very important point of $30 silver. Uh, it will turn into a floor once it holds above that for a while, um, and then it will never be broken in the history of mankind. We'll see. We'll see what happens, right? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a very exciting time. And then the other, I mean, if you go back, let's go back 10 years, right? Uh, let's go back 10 years. So there, there we have, this is since the 1950s. Here we have, that's uh, intraday closing. It was actually up here within the day, intraday. It was up at 49 something. I don't think it ever hit 50. Same with uh, 2011. Now, 2011 was the same thing. It didn't, it didn't hit 50 and then pull back because of market forces. Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan impl input, implanted uh, B Bill Daly, their, the head of the Jamie Dimon, J.P. Morgan SWAT team, as Barack Obama's chief of staff, because they had inherited the, the uh, Bear Stearns silver short position, which went down, in a, or was it Bear Stearns or was it? Yeah, it was Bear Stearns, um, which went down in a, a heap of smoke. Um, so it was Jamie Dimon that ran the price from $25 to $50 and then slammed it back down, creating an artificial bear market that we've had to endure. So those two instances where... Silver was about to hit fifty dollars. Were both artificially slammed down. So I don't, I don't see any, any uh, resistance at fifty. I don't think people are going to be running out and selling their physical silver. 
They might be running out selling derivative paper contracts, um, but they're trying to do that now. It's not working. So anything above that, the bankers have massive losses, triggers the derivative collapse, and it's over, which is great. <laughs> Chaos, but it's great. Anyway, uh, gold-silver ratio, those of you who have swapped your gold for silver at 90, we're down to 83. That's going to fall down to, my estimate, 3 to 1 is where it should be today. Uh, maybe even two to one now that more solar is, I'm, I'm talking about investable silver. How much silver is on the planet compared to gold? Most people think it's about six billion of each, which would indicate a one-to-one -one relationship. Coming out of the ground, it's seven to one, but you know, 60, 70, 80% of that is getting consumed and thrown into landfills on the industrial side. So it, it's really not. Um, so that's what I'm waiting for. David Morgan's waiting for 70 to 1 to really confirm that silver is going to is in a in a bull run compared to gold. And it looks like we're going to hit that pretty pretty soon, I think when it busts bust by 30, uh, I don't think gold's going to go all that crazy. So yeah, I do think you should absolutely if you can swap your gold for silver. Especially if you love gold because when it goes down to, you know, let's just say 10 to 1 conservatively, 7 to 1 it's coming out of the ground. You're going to buy, be able to buy, you know, 10 times the amount of gold that you have right now. Don't you like gold? Don't you like gold? By swapping it back. Swap the silver now, buy it back when the ratio gets below, say, 20 or 10. Or when it goes 1 to 10, how much gold can you buy? When one ounce of silver buys you 10 ounces of gold. I, I do think we're going to go there for various reasons. One, the overexcitement. We will hit a point of overexcitement because what's going to stop people from buying that, that tiny hundredth of an ounce for the cell phone. It's, it's a tiny compared to like electric cars. People say, oh my God, they're using so much uh, silver in electric cars. The, the car industry doesn't even understand anything about it and doesn't even care. The car industry doesn't care how much silver they use because it's so cheap compared to, I mean, you're buying a car for $40,000 that has two ounces of silver in it if it's an electric car. Two ounces of silver is $50. What do they care that there's $50 of silver in each car when the price of the car is $40,000? They don't give a shit. So that'll keep going. That, the interesting thing is how much silver are they really using in these electric cars? I'm hearing three to five ounces. The industry, the industry, by the way, are people. And led by a, an entity called the the... Silver Institute, which is not an institute, it's 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 one guy, and he's a lobbyist for the bankers, in my opinion. Um, so that's where I mean that's the experts. It's so ridiculous. The whole thing is so ridiculous. Um, but we're waking up. The silver knights are here to to help us along. People can take their brain out from hibernation and just look at solar and, and move that on to electric cars. How much? How much silver is an electric car? I did plan on this year, if, if they if they keep the rig up, keep keep it going, I plan on, in, in lying about how much solar, I plan on taking some of the high, uh, the most popular solar panels, the ones they use the most of. Topcon is going to take up 80%. So some of those Topcon panels, and they're all kind of different. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a recycler, actually, I'll probably have to pay a few grand, but I'm going to have them actually take apart one of the most, a few of the most popular panels and melt down, melt down the, as much silver as they can get out of it to find out exactly how much silver does go into these, each one of these. And it's going to be interesting. It's in, you know, how much would be lost. There's no real way, unless you have uh, the books of these large manufacturers, which this is very, very, very tightly held information in the solar panel producers. They are not going to tell you shit. Although I do have the price of um, solar uh, paste, the silver paste that they use to spray on um, panels. And look at this. Look what it's done over the last couple of months. I mean, this is the last month. Look at that jump. I mean, it was down at uh, 4,000. These are Chinese yuan, U.S. dollars, from $600, and it has jumped to, this is uh, $675. Wait a minute. That's just in the last few weeks. In the whole month, yeah. So five, 592 to six. It, it's like 
what's that, 30% jump in the price of silver paste? You know they're running out. You know they're running out. And they and it just keeps going. The demand is insatiable because the, the Chinese government's paying for it all. The U.S. government is paying for it. Every country, the EU is subsidizing the green energy world. Of course, they're going to make as much as possible. Janet Yellen is the biggest hypocrite on the planet running over to China saying, stop making solar panels. Stop polluting and stop making solar panels. Anyway. That's where we are. Uh, Want to quickly go over Theta? Yes, I think it is a screaming buy. Anything under like 100 bucks right now for Theta is a screaming buy. Uh, well, theta is currently trading right around 3 bucks, which is 5x move just to get back to its all-time high in 2020 um, or 2021, around 15 bucks. It will continue to go. Yes, it'll go in bumps and starts, there are things happening at Theta that will literally shock the world. You think NVIDIA is big? Theta will blow it away, blow it out of the water. Yes, NVIDIA, I know, it's the largest corporation now by market cap. How much? Let's, let's take a look at NVIDIA. Hold on. Uh, I don't I, I never look at stocks. I, back in the day, I used to look at Yahoo Finance, so... Um, NVIDIA market cap. Uh, yeah, look at look at this. Look at look at what it's done this year. It's gone from 274 to 800. The market cap one 2.2 trillion dollar market cap for a single company that Theta literally can do more than or will be able to do more than once they release the uh, Edge Cloud, which is coming in 20 days. Theta Edge Cloud in 20 days. All of a sudden, Theta can do massively more because it's sharing CPU power all throughout the world. And this is actually the Edge Cloud. So the sharing universe is what Theta is all about. They were sharing broadband. That was the beginnings of Theta with video and gaming. Yeah, that's great. Now they're Then they went to Edge Compute where you can share computing power. Now, how that works, psh, all this stuff is beyond me. But it does work. And it is working. And this is the, the mother of all mothers, I think. And that's edge computing or edge storage. It's an iCloud. They're working with Google. They're working with all these companies to make it happen. It's an iCloud, a decentralized iCloud. Like the current iCloud, like it, what, whatever, like Google or... Amazon, you know, off-site storage. It's in the cloud. It's in the cloud. Those are massive servers that serve all this stuff. This is taking the extra space on every server on the planet who wants to participate, and a lot are participating already, but it's it can be downloaded on every phone on the planet. Uh, 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 edge, uh, edge cache, no, Ed node cacher. Anyway, on your phone, the reality is this is going to change the world. We don't have to build 5G towers everywhere. We got we can share broadband. We don't have to create all these NVIDIA massive CPUs with this massive computation ability because we can share computation ability. We don't have to build massive Google cloud server farms and all that because we can share extra space on people's hard drive. That's what Edge Cloud is. This is so big. It's so much bigger than NVIDIA. And that's the exciting thing about Theta. And nobody knows about it. You do. You do. I do. This is going to get a little silly, my friends. So, yes, Theta is going into the thousands. And here we're sitting at $2.92. $2.92 $2 in something that goes into the thousands. You're going to make – this is this is lifetime money. And it's going to keep going, too. There's nothing stopping solar panels. There's nothing stopping that world from going crazy. And there's nothing stopping Theta and what Theta is doing from going crazy. They invented and patented a technology that changes the world. Much like when the World Wide Web was invented back in 1990. Oh my God, the World Wide Web. Nobody knew what it was in the beginning. Katie Couric came out and said, mail through the internet? How stupid is that? That's the classic, oh my God, look that one up. Katie Couric talking about the internet in the 1990s. That's where we are with Ada. This is bigger than that, though. 
This is the, a shareable world of computer overcapacity. You have overcapacity in broadband, you have overcapacity in computation ability, and you have overcapacity in cloud storage, in your, the storage in your devices. And Theta has, learned, has invented a way to tap into that. Massive. Uh, another partnership just announced Theta partners with Aether to launch the largest hybrid GPU marketplace for AI and DPIN. I mean, talk about massive. Can you imagine the investment funds that are going to be running into, trying to run into Theta? I mean, who was it? Franklin Templeton, CEO, came out. Was it Franklin Templeton? Yeah. CEO and came out and, and basically explained that, hey, Bitcoin is the big distraction. What's really going on in the blockchain, there's a company that can share all the excess capacity on your all your devices. They, she was talking about Theta, 100%. Anyway, uh, so this is a big partnership. Distributed Cloud GPU Network Project, Aether and Theta Edge Cloud, the hybrid cloud computing platform powered by Theta Edge Network, are preparing to launch the largest hybrid GPU marketplace for developers and enterprises. The collaboration aims to provide unprecedented global CPU compute capabilities with the potential to deliver 20 to 30 times greater power than any comparable network in the industry today. 20 to 30 times what all this exciting stuff around NVIDIA does. 20 to 30 times. And here's their uh, little advertisement. I'm going to play this for you guys. We are Aether, and we build decentralized cloud infrastructure for gaming and AI. The AI and gaming landscapes are evolving exponentially, demanding cloud resources at an unprecedented rate and scale. But the challenge of satisfying this global appetite isn't just about capacity. The cloud like traditional infrastructure, serves diverse, evolving needs, but is slow and costly to adapt. AI apps like ChatGPT have strained cloud infrastructure with rapid user growth, hinting at bigger challenges ahead. The gaming industry has a similar issue of scale. Billions of gamers interact with the cloud every day, and like the AI sector, their cloud requirements are shifting. The future of online experiences has always been real-time. From DVDs to Netflix, from HDDs to online file storage, it's happened over and over again. But we're reaching current infrastructure limits, and things are starting to get complicated. Today's text-based chat GPT will evolve into voice and video AI. The challenge is scaling it. Similarly, game developers are looking to the cloud to unlock access to the 2.8 billion gamers stuck on low-end devices. It isn't a matter of whether these gamers come online. It's simply a matter of when. Today's cloud infrastructure makes scaling latency-sensitive applications like AI digital avatars or cloud gaming instances cost-prohibitive. In a microsecond-critical era, lag causes churn. Even giants like Google and NVIDIA struggle with scalable cloud gaming. Enter Aether and our decentralized cloud infrastructure. Our ethos is simple. Cloud scalability is an infrastructure problem, not a business model problem. And if the world wants to keep up with global demand, its infrastructure needs to evolve fast. Our magic? We're decentralized. We're not bound by traditional resource ownership or supply chain constraints, nor do we bear the overheads or deal with dormant, pricey equipment. Instead, our network thrives on a low capital expansion model. We expand like a swarm, with small independent nodes offering local, highly efficient, low latency solutions. This gives us an edge. We exist where our customers do offering services at a fraction of the cost. We're the ideal global solution because we aren't really global at all. Aether is building infrastructure that will ensure global access and scalability for the two most cloud-intensive industries on the planet, and we're only just getting started. Aether, decentralized cloud infrastructure for gaming and AI. <coughs> there you go. Um, yes, obviously we can see the similarities there, although Theta's mainly a software. <laughs> Theta is pretty much a software download. Uh, Aether has all these massive uh, nodes and computers running and all this stuff. Uh, great partnership just announced as of, uh, that would be April 10th. So what is today, the 11th? Yeah, that was yesterday. Um, largest hybrid GPU marketplace for AI. I mean... <laughs> How can people not see that Theta is so 
massively, massively undervalued compared to what it's going to be doing in the future. And those are the kind of investments we need to highly invest in. Uh, if you're in Bitcoin, think about it. Bitcoin is at its all-time high. Theta is at one-fifth of its all-time high. The future of Bitcoin depends on the future of fiat money and the banking system. The future of Theta depends on the continual growth and expansion of all the AI in the world. If you think AI is going to continue to grow, which it is, obviously. If you think uh, gaming is going to continue to grow, which it is. If you think movies are going to continue to grow. You think the rest of the world, the, the Belt and Road Initiative that Andy Sheckman talks so passionately about using silver, they're going to need absolutely internet connectivity. They're the ones who are going to be needing massive... It's, it's not about the U.S. anymore. U.S. growth is like, yeah, it's still going up, but not much. The rest of the world is building. They want what we have. And you can't do that with the silver available, number one, obviously. And then the uh, Wi-Fi systems. Are we going to put a 5G tower on every street corner in Africa? That's what's happening in the world. And, and a way to do that would be download on every cell phone. How about a, a edge note on every cell phone sharing the computing capacity, sharing the broadband, and sharing the, the storage capacity of every cell phone in Africa? And there's a lot, believe it or not, there's a lot of cell phones in Africa. More people, you know, not a lot of computers, but a hell of a lot of cell phones. Why? Because it's mobile and it doesn't cost as much. You know, they're knockdown type of stuff, cell phones, but hey. And those are using silver as well. The whole world is changing. You need to be in the right place at the right time. Get yourself some theta, theta fuel, um, and all these new tokens that are being branched off of theta. Um, Lavidia, I think, just doubled. And that was a, a free airdrop from theta when they, when they went on the theta subchain. So, yes, uh, at Road to Ruta, we do have information on Theta, how to buy it, store it, and stake it. That's really the only crypto that we're um, kind of walk you through how to do it because it's still not on Coinbase, believe it or not. It's amazing. You can get it on simpleswap.io and other other uh, places, but you know it is shocking that such an important cryptocurrency is not on Coinbase. It's not part of the deep state either. As far as I can tell, the deep state isn't even near it. Uh, they are near a lot of the other cryptos. You know, like XRP and um, EOS, obviously, we know that. Uh, Tether. Yeah. When that, you know, if you're, if you're waiting for when's the next shoe going to drop in cryptos, uh, it will be the, the shutdown of Tether and the dumping of Bitcoin out of the, um, the U.S. government has all that Bitcoin from the Silk Road that they confiscated. They, they plan on dumping it at the next time, the next time they want to do it, you know, it, of course, they, they rig prices. They've rigged every dump in the past. They're going to do it again. So I don't think it's – it's probably like September, October time frame. I think Bitcoin will blow by 100,000 this run. Um, probably sometime – well, Cliff has it coming and had always, you know, the De December parties of $100,000 Bitcoin. And then the U.S. government will once again come in and slam it um, because they can. <laughs> They're little assholes. Um, but hey, I'm not so sure they can slam Theta. I mean, it's it's traded on a derivative market. So get, if you have any Theta or any cryptos at all, you better get them off exchanges. They better not be sitting on Coinbase. Or you will lose them. You will lose them. Just talk to the the uh, people who held their cryptos on FTX. Although I, I hear they're getting a cash settlement. <laughs> Too bad for them. Um, anyway, that's what I got. Uh if you, we are currently giving away a paper wallet with Theta on it, 5 Theta, 50 Theta Fuel, and 500 T-Drop. Uh, I think this will be worth a lot of money in the future. So uh, that's with every private road membership and renewal. Go check that out at roadtoroo.com. We'll, we'll stay on it. Uh, I think I'm talking to Jenny Moonstone today. We'll be talking about uh, what the next move is for silver and a lot about what's going to happen next week, which I think it would be a really interesting time for silver as the whole world all of a sudden finds out that, oh, my God, the Silver Institute missed their numbers by 100% and more. So we'll see what happens. This is Big Square. I'll talk to you.